What's up, modern steaders? Today, I thought we'd talk about the top seven mistakes to avoid when starting in on your modern homesteading endeavors. Number one would be when getting livestock, make sure they're gonna pay for themselves. If not, make you money. What I mean by that is at least have it so what you're getting from food pays for your feed and all your costs you have into them. And it'd be even better if you can sell some of their eggs or byproducts to pay for their feed so you're getting free food. And while we're on the topic of livestock, make sure your livestock serve a dual purpose. So for chickens, you're going to have, they can lay eggs or you can get meat from them, but also you got to remember you're going to get manure from them and you can utilize that for compost and building the fertility in your fields. Pigs, again, you're going to get meat, put them to work. We had them here last summer. We had them rooting up along the sides of the stone walls and cleaning up, less work we had to do. So we got food out of them, we got work from them, and their poop is making compost for the summer's gardens. Rabbits, same thing. You can have your rabbits for meat, you can save their fur, and you can make mittens, hats, all different things out of them. And their manure makes an awesome compost. You save their manure aside and you put some worms in there, that stuff turns into the best compost you can find. Number three, if you breed your livestock, don't breed them without having a plan of what you're going to do with the offspring. What I mean by that is if you have goats or cows and you're breeding them so you can get milk, make sure you have a plan of what you're going to do with the offspring. Whether it be you're going to sell it, make sure you can sell them, and if you don't plan on selling them, that you can find somebody to harvest the meat for you, or you can do it yourself. Don't wait till after you already have the animals and then you can't get rid of them, or you can't do it yourself. That's just a big expense and another mouth to have to feed. Then if you have an incubator, and if you're raising chickens, and you have a lot of roosters, you gotta know how to be able to harvest the roosters yourself because you're not gonna be able to sell them all and you don't wanna have a bunch of roosters running around your property eating all your grain. Number four, when you move into the country, make sure you have a way to make money. If you plan on selling farm products, do your research. Hey Pluto. And if you plan on selling your farm products, do your research and make sure they're selling in your area and what they're going for. You don't want to be like, oh, I'm going to go sell eggs, and then you get to the area and everybody's selling eggs for two bucks a dozen, and you plan on selling them for four or five. When buying a piece of property, know the zoning laws for the area you're buying. You want to know what you can build there. You want to know if you're allowed to have animals. What kind of animals you're allowed to have? Can you have chickens? Can you have chickens and roosters? Do your research. Are they gonna allow that in the neighborhood you're purchasing in? Find out and do your research. Find out what your local building codes are. Does the municipality you're building in have a building inspector? If they do or if they don't, how are they for homeowners building their own stuff? Some municipalities don't have a problem with you building your own and doing everything yourself. Others have a problem with it and they, they won't tell you you can't but they're going to give you a hard time and nitpick everything you do and they can make your life a living hell while you're building the property. Number seven which I think this is a huge one never let the banker tell you how much you can afford. You need to figure out your own budget and know if you're going for a mortgage what you can comfortably afford. If you ever lost work or out of work, couldn't find work for a little while, can you still pay your mortgage without having to worry about losing your homestead? Better yet, live on beans and rice for a few years, save up, buy your property outright, and then build it and grow it as the money comes in. You don't need to have a huge extravagant modern homestead. Do what you can, when you can. If you're on your endeavors of building your own modern homestead, or you want to build your own, leave it down in the comments below. I'd love to know where you're at. If you're in the planning stage, you're there, and you've hit some snags. We've all been there before. We're still building our homestead as we go, so 
leave it in the comments down below, like the video while you're there, and subscribe if you already haven't. And we'll see you right back here next time at Lumna Acres, a guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency, and freedom. Oh,